Powerful beginner bikes, huh? Well, you already know which one I'm gonna spend most of the time talking about, right? If not, clearly this is your first time here. Let me tell you something. We occasionally like to talk about one very specific and very special motorcycle. You might have heard of it. It's the Turbo Hayabusa. It is the greatest beginner bike of all time. For only $13,000, you get a nice supple power band that you can really grow into. So why am I making this video then? You see, some people, for some reason, they don't listen to me. They think I'm joking around, which I am 100% not, by the way. But for those people who don't take my serious advice for serious riders seriously, I have come up with some other options. I suppose 350 wheel horsepower and north of 150 foot-pounds of torque might not be for everyone. So I've gone back into the vault and I've dug up some of the most powerful beginner bikes you can spend money on. Now, we're talking about power today, meaning that we're not going to spend a lot of time on 300s, 250s, or God forbid, 125s. I'm sorry, my Euro boys. All these bikes are on the bleed edge of a beginner bike, but in most cases you can still get an A2 kit. If you're in a country where it's illegal to start on a Turbo Busa, you might be able to still buy these bikes. We're going to go in order from the least powerful to most powerful. Let's dive in with number seven, the Kawasaki Ninja 400, the perfect toilet, the Chipotle of motorcycles, the bike everyone says I hate because I wasn't completely over the moon about it when it first came out. Look, people, let me lay it out real slow for you. Yammy like bikey. Is that good enough? On a serious note, I do like the Ninja 400. It is a great entry point into motorcycles, and it's also the most powerful beginner bike in the 3 to 400 cc range. Little Ninja is putting down 45 horsepower and 28 foot pounds of torque, which is perfectly appropriate for just about any beginner out there. But Yami, what about the CBR 500R? It's making 47 horsepower, which complex calculation and rigorous scientific study puts it at two more horses than the Ninja. So that means it's better, right? Confirm my bias, internet dad. I need you to tell me I didn't spend $7,000 on a bike that isn't as good as the smaller one. Well, I'm sorry, my dudes, but the Ninja weighs in at 368 pounds wet and ready to ride to the CBR's 423. That means the Ninja is going to be lighter, faster, and nimbler to ride. Oh, and it only costs $4,999 brand new, so yes, you did waste your money. Sorry. Having ridden both of these motorcycles, I can say that the Ninja is infinitely more fun and playful than the CBR. It is better around a twisty road and a racetrack. Literally the only thing that the CBR 500 has that the Ninja doesn't is preload adjustability in the front forks for some reason. Am I starting a holy crusade against the Honda CBR 500R? Perhaps, but it knows what it did and it deserves what's coming. Now, if you're looking to get started like a smart boy on a Ninja 400, you should be getting yourself a nice new helmet. Just your luck, we've got some new helmets in stock over at YN Moto. We've got the Nolan N105, which is a top shelf modular helmet with all the right stickers on there to keep you safe. We've also got you covered if you're an aspiring ADV dad with the N72X, which is a nice light with some removable and adjustable bits and bobs so you can set it up just the way you want. If you're curious, Nolan's got some serious chops to back up their lids. They're an Italian brand making helmets for riders from the penny pinch and beginner all the way up to MotoGP riders. Seriously, Alex Rins wears a Nolan. You see, we only have the best for you. Your papa's looking out for you. Remember, every dollar you spend on YN Moto is an entry to win our giveaway bikes. Hit the link down below. Number six goes to the Triumph Bonneville street twin. I always forget these bikes exist. I think it's probably got something to do with the fact that every year Triumph pulls back the curtain revealing another new Bonnie for you to add to the collection. Seriously, they're like Pokemon cards at this point. You've got the holographic Thruxton R, the Dad Mode Speedmaster, the Scrambler XE and XC, complete with limited James Bond edition, which, by the way, if you saw the movie, it's only in there for like 90 seconds before he literally just throws it into the ground and then a whole bunch more just plain Jane versions. That being said, the Street Twin is a solid choice for a beginner with a little bit more cash to drop on their first bike. How much cash? $9,600 if you don't go with the fancy EC1 edition. Oh, but if you're feeling ostentatious, you do have the gold line for $10,350 with some fancy gold trim. Now, some specs for you out there taking notes at home. The Street Twin puts down 64 horsepower and 59 foot-pounds of torque out of its 900cc parallel twin. But the benefit of going with one of these more upmarket bikes is that it doesn't sound like some overgrown lawnmower. It's got an absolutely velvety smooth 270 degree crank which gives it a great sound. I mean, just take a quick listen to one of these. Now, before you get too worried about this bike getting away from you, let me tell you that it's a pretty lazy 64 horsepower. It's more about the torque on this thing. And it's heavy, weighing in at 476 pounds, so it's definitely manageable if you're an older beginner rider. Now, whether spending that much cash on your first bike is a good idea is a matter of some debate, but that's not what this video is about. But if trading dollars for slowness is your bag, then number five might just be the bike you're looking for. It is the Harley Sportster 1200. Which one? Anyone. Just pick your favorite. They're all using the same 1202. 
No, wait a minute. This is America. That's right. They're all using the same 73 cubic inch V-twin, putting down 73 foot-pounds of torque at 3,500 RPM. After that, it's all downhill. It's also only making 68 horsepower, which is usually left out of most articles. Look, you can't expect me to talk about a Sportster without joking about it a little bit, so bear with me. The Sportster is making one torque per cube, so I'm going to assume that its power per displacement is perfectly linear. That means to make liter bike torque, it would need an 80 to 84 cubic inch engine. That's between 1310 and 1380 cc's for normal people. Now, horsepower is torque times RPM divided by 5252, so working backwards, we can say that to reach liter bike horsepower, let's call it 190 horsepower, it would need to rev to roughly 11,900 RPM. That's just a mere 6400 RPM more than the bike's red line, all while using an engine 400 cc bigger than most liter bikes and costing the same as an MT-10. All this to say, I do not recommend a Sportster, but I I am not a cruiser boy. When we had our giveaway bike, Spite wouldn't shut the hell up about how much character it had and how it was the purest form of American motorcycling and all that, so clearly, it's meant for a different audience. But it's got big numbers, so it's here on the list. Now let's forget bad V-twins and let's think about good V-twins. Number four goes to the Suzuki SV650, the Ducati monster you have at home. Now don't let that get your Suzuki branded undies in a twist. The SV650 is one of the best beginner bikes you can spend your money on. In fact, Josh over at Yamanu bought an SV650 because I told him so in a video like forever ago. I don't know, he watched some video and I said to get the SV650, so he got one. It's a bike that you can keep in your garage for years, even after you've moved on to bigger and better motorcycles, but you don't have to. The SV650 is putting down a solid 75 horsepower and 47 foot-pounds of Torgos from its 645cc V-twin. Yeah, that's right. It's literally almost half the displacement of the Sportster, and it makes more horsepower. Why? Why get a Harley? The best part about this bike is that it's a 90 degree V-twin without Desmos, so you really don't need the air of a vast oil empire to afford the maintenance on it. Are Desmos really that expensive? Yes, so much so that Ducati's slowly replacing Desmo with springs because even they have to draw the line in the sand somewhere, otherwise they might go under again. Getting back on topic, the best part of the SV650 is that it's the answer to just about any question. If you want a great commuter, just get an SV650 and ride it. You want to make some Twins Cup race bike or you just want a well-sorted track bike, SVs have a massive aftermarket of go-fast parts tempered only by the depth of your pocketbook. They make cafe kits, scrambler kits, touring kits, anything you want your SV to do, it'll do it and it won't complain about it. The only thing that makes the experience of owning an SV650 better is the fact that you'll be able to smugly make fun of your friends for making a demonstrably worse choice in beginner bikes. That is unless you're comparing spec sheets and your friends are on an MT-07. That's correct. Number three is the humble MT-07, basically unchanged since 2014 with bold new graphics for 2021. I could go into the minutia of the small changes that went into this bike, but functionally, it's the same thing. They knocked it out of the park, and they've been making it the same since 2014. They made it more dark side of Japan-y with its angry ninja face, and left the engine more or less untouched. It's putting down 75 horsepower and 50 foot-pounds of torque out of a 689cc, 270-degree parallel twin, which means it's got more numbers than the SV650 numbers, and more numbers is better, right? Sort of. I know it's really common to fall into the spec sheet simp patterns when you're out there looking for your first motorcycle. You want to make sure you're maximizing every dollar you're spending on your motorcycle, getting the most bang for buck as it were, but that's not always the best way to go. Think about it like this. When you're playing D&D, do you want to have some highly specialized dude in your party with all the charisma in the world who then gets stomped every time your party's barbarian starts thinking with his axe? No, you want someone with a little more balance in their kit. And while I like the MT-07 a lot, and I think it's a lot of fun, Yamaha really did spend all their perk points on an engine, leaving basically nothing for the rest of the bike. The suspension, to use industry speak, leaves a little bit to be desired. In normal people words, it kinda sucks. The SV has a much more pulled together suspension out of the box, it's also $300 cheaper than the MT, which might be enough to cover the price of your slip-on exhaust. Now, while we're talking about the MT, we might as well mention the R7, seeing as they're basically making the same power, and the R7's got a better suspension, sport bike looks, and ergos and a bigger price tag, but hey, you'll be able to blend into the R crowd. Number two today is going to go to the other Triumph beginner bike, the Trident 660. Now, this one is interesting because it was meant to be the entry point for a lot of people to get into the Triumph brand and experience the triple cylinder lifestyle in a little bit more of a chilled out package and more importantly, under $10,000. If you watched any of our coverage of this motorcycle when we had it in the shop as a beginner bike, we weren't exactly smitten with this bike. It's not a bad motorcycle, far from it. It's got solid build quality, a reliable engine, and really nice looks. It's a bike you could be proud to start on, but it 
doesn't have the same triple cylinder charm that some purists out there might be looking for. Add to that a strange throttle feel as well. But all that aside, the Trident is putting down 80 horsepower and 47 foot-pounds of Torgos out of its 660cc triple, making it pretty unique among beginner bikes. If you don't want a parallel twin or a V-twin or a single cylinder, you're basically stuck with a pedal bike as your first choice, which hey, might not be so bad. Maybe pick yourself up a Tarmac SL6 or something. Now with the Trident, you can get that triple cylinder sound that otherwise you'd be paying out the nose for. The Trident is right on the bleeding edge of what I would consider a beginner bike, and I recommend it more for the returning rider or the older rider rather than an 18 year old looking for a cool way to show up to your senior day picture. One little known secret about the Trident though is when you do the 600 mile service, they actually unbolt the old engine and replace it with a street and triple engine. Yeah, no, but if you check the comment section, you'll definitely see someone saying that it completely changes once you get out to the 600 miles and I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe we'll get one and make a video proving once and for all that that is BS. Last up today is the fastest, most powerful beginner bike out there. It's the Honda CBR650R. Yep, an inline four motorcycle making all the classic sport bike sounds and the same lack of low down torque. Look, normally I wouldn't recommend a motorcycle making 94 horsepower and 47 foot pounds of torque to a beginner, but if you're an actual responsible human, it's doable thanks to the way the inline fours make their powers. By design, the power's all at the top of the RPM band, meaning you have to really wind the bike out to find the power. That means that if you're a good boy about short shifting and the motorcycle, you'd be actually able to learn on the bike and then start getting to the top end punch when you're more comfortable. We have a whole video on the CBR versus the R7, which actually did better than the Turbo Hayabusa content, which hurt my soul a little bit, but if you want the full breakdown, go and check it out. YouTube really loved that video for some reason. It has like 200,000 views, I think. The CBR is pretty expensive for what it is, so I wouldn't recommend it over something like the R7 or the SV650, but if you have to have the sport bike sound, it's probably the best you're going to be able to do short of starting on an R6 and realizing why I keep telling you that's a bad idea. Fact. Back in the 1800s, composer Franz Liszt was worshipped like a rock star. In fact, he received so many requests for locks of his hair, that he eventually bought a dog only to snip off patches of his fur and send to his admirers. Gotta respect the hustle. Goodbye. All right, look, you don't have to lie to me. If you had time for one Yammy New video all the way to the end, you probably have time for another one. You should probably just click this link and watch the video right over here. I promise it's gonna be good. You won't regret it. Seriously, you should just, just click it. I'm sure it's good. We only make good stuff around here. You should, you should just watch it. Why are you still here?